Hey up YouTube, sorry, <laughs> I completely didn't realise it started recording. It used to be my old phone that makes a little bong when it starts recording. So, hey up guys, sorry I'm a little out of breath, I've just been rounding or ridging up my potatoes. Didn't record it because, you know, it's raking dirt up against the side of the potatoes. Uh, I'll do a quick plot tour afterwards and I'll talk about it anyway. Uh, not a lot going on in today's video to be honest. Um, I've got some pumpkins to plant out. Uh, I think the threat of frost has passed enough to be able to for me to do that. Uh, and besides which, if they don't go out, they're just going to end up pot bound because uh, silly me planted the the pumpkin seeds in these little modules, uh, and then they're not big enough. They're certainly not big enough for the plants to stay in for any length of time. So anyway, I'm going to plant them out on the uh, neighbouring half plot. Uh, I'm putting as many of those out as possible. And then my intention is to sell them cheap and give the proceeds to Cancer Research. That is my intention. I am going to set up a, a bit of a just giving or something like that for you guys. Um, if you would like to contribute, obviously I'm not going to send you a pumpkin. But if you would like to... Um, it's going to be one of the cancer charities anyway. Um, so if you would like to donate, I'm going to set all that up in the coming weeks. If I have already done it, which is my hope, the link will be in the description below. Uh, it's a bit of a fundraiser, purely and simply. I'm doing it because the fellow who's giving me or lending me that half plot, unfortunately, isn't, isn't able to tend to a full plot due to illness. I'm not going to go into it too much. But I feel rather than me grow something and me profit from that or me... Um, save money from that or something like that it feels a much more appropriate use of that land to grow something and to give the proceeds away so something like uh, pumpkins things like that obviously I can sell them as, as carvers and things like that and I'll sell them cheap you know it'd be a pound a pop or something like that but all the profits will go to a cancer based charity not too sure where it'll be. It'll either be Macmillan Nurses or probably Cancer Research UK, something like that. It'll be in the description below this video for a fun, for a just giving page or something to that effect. With regards to you guys, your subscribers, give what you can. That'd be brilliant. So without further ado, let's get the boring. Let's that's 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 the interesting stuff out of the way. Please hit the like, share, and subscribe button. If you only hit two of those. Hit the, sub, the like and subscribe button. If you only hit one of them, I, I'd like it to be the share button, please. Share the videos as much as you can, because on top of anything else, if we if we just get if we just more people view it, hopefully more people will donate, and we'll just make a little bit more money for the charity. Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. Out there planting pumpkins. Out over there somewhere. Now, see you in a bit. YouTube. So here we are, here we are. This is the stretch of land I'm going to fill with pumpkins. Doesn't look as big as it is on the video. Uh, I'm not going all the way down to the end there. I'll probably go to just sort of a line, imaginary, imaginary line from where the gate is. Um, and I'm going to put a lot of pumpkins. I'm probably going to time lapse it because, you know, it's me just putting some plants in some holes. And, you know, that's, that is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about the volunteer potatoes. You can see them sort of around there. I'm not going to worry about them too much. The pumpkins won't really care uh, as long as they're not too near the roots. Um, but I'm going to stripe them with a good. I'm going to stripe them sort of that way. I'm going to leave plenty of room between the plants because you can see we have plenty of room. So you know, I'm not going to worry about any of that. Is that one of my buckets down there? I think it is. Um, so let's get let's get them in without further ado.
it really is as simple as that guys that's what one two three four five six twelve <laughs> it's about 18 providing i put the same in every line i think some had more some had less it's about 18 uh pumpkins planted out uh and i've got enough life to go do i don't do the three sisters method i do the two sisters method so i'm going to go put the other pumpkins in at the side of my sweet corn in the uh on my plot now the reason i've not finished and kept going down like i said i was going to is because what i've actually sown as well as these guys these are just jack-o-lantern pumpkins as well as these guys i've actually sown uh 10 atlantic giant pumpkins as well so there's space for them down there and there's a little bit of space for them in my plot you should just see rosa pop out of her little den up there look uh, so they, they can go in uh, in this space i might do just while the pumpkins are growing i might put some uh bush beans in we'll see um but i might also do some bush beans down on that other half somewhere uh, just because i've got some now i know people are going to say well these might get eaten off they might you know that's why i've put them in now what i'm going to do is as a reserve i'm going to sow another tray or two of just plain old jack-o-lantern pumpkins just in case these all get wiped out if they don't you can always give them away uh, but i'm going to sow another tray and put them in the polytunnel and uh actually well not today i'm not because the, the seeds are at home but um yeah that's it guys the pumpkin seeds are in uh i'm going to like i said put some atlantic giants in as well for a bit of fun uh and who knows maybe they'll sell i don't i have no idea i do know of some pubs if they reopen back back reopening time i do know of some pubs that like to buy uh, atlantic giants to have a giant carved pumpkin in their parking lot and things like that so that might be an option but that's the pumpkins in like i said i'm going to throw some in on my side and then we'll have a we'll have a quick walk around the plot and then i want to do a quick walk around the uh, the at home garden as well uh, just to update you on the one seed challenge and what's the other one the sunflower challenge as well we need to update you on that uh so yeah i'll crack on guys right guys well that is me done for today it's uh it's one o'clock and the kids want some lunch so we're going to get going so we're just going to do a quick whittle, whitt, bleh, yeah quick whiff round so i've started sorting out you probably may have remembered that this had a, a box of fencing and a shelf on top that i've been using as a bit of a workbench it had some onions in underneath it so i've just uncovered that i've started to hoe it all off pull out all the volunteer potatoes things like that uh, there's more work to be done there i completely appreciate but there we go sweet corn 99% of it survived the frosts. I think on a cursory glance, I think there is two or three that have gone out of 39. So quite happy with that. Looks like uh, after two years, mare's tail free though. It looks like mare's tail's trying to have a bit of a resurgence. When it comes to mare's tail, guys, you're going to hear all sorts of contradictory information. People are going to say dig it out. People are going to say hey, don't dig it out. I don't dig it out. I take the tops off uh, and as, as deep as I can. Um, it's a prehistoric route. It goes up to 20, 30, 40, 50 feet under the ground. It's actually been found at the bottom of coal mines. So if you're thinking you're going to dig it all out, it's not going to happen. Oh, that's my pump kicking in cool so these are the, the, the four pumpkins that i'm going to train to go that way in and amongst the bottom of all the sweet corn and that just helps suppress the weeds at the bottom of the sweet corn one thing you do need to do though if you're doing this a mistake i've made is you need to plant them far enough away so that these roots are not going to be subtracting nitrogen from the base of your sweet corn sweet corn is a very hungry plant so uh, do be aware of that here obviously you can't see anything at the moment i just know that there's, there's something here because two markers we've got the parsnip and the beetroot that you saw in the last video the uh the extra onions you know i've got onions everywhere and now mounding potatoes once again it's a controversial subject a lot of people say do it one way some people say do it another way they were all nicely mounded until the chickens came in and decided to uh to weed all the to take all the young little shoots out that i'd uncovered from the weeds but 
you know what raking that back is a short price as a little price to pay for having them eat a load of weeds so i'm quite happy with that going back to what i was saying yeah some people say you know mound up cover them right up some people say don't mound up for me the reason i mound up really is i bulk up the sides and yes some of the plant does get covered um i don't mound up until roughly until they're about all six inches tall if possible for some reason this year i seem to have very sporadic growth um once they're up they catch up it's not a problem but the reason i mound up really is to, i only do it on my main crop and it's to stop them growing out the sides and getting exposure to the sunlight obviously as you know exposure to the sunlight will cause your potatoes to go green once they're green you can't eat them they're poisonous these are not mounded up these are my new these are some new potatoes i uh, didn't do too many new potatoes this year because we just didn't get a chance to eat them all before they all uh, spoilt the asparagus is all going to fern it's year one I have sort of raked it off and I have broken a couple of them off, which is a little upsetting. Hopefully that won't set, set them back too much. Um, but I just have to remember sort of this quarter and this quarter down here, not to harvest anything from for an extra year. It's only three or four plants. I'm not overly worried. The potatoes in the buckets seem to largely escape frost. There is a little bit of frost damage, but overall very happy the daffodils are refusing to die back i mean obviously they're flowered and the flowers have gone but they're refusing to anyway they'll do what they want to do this is this is uh we're growing a pirate rosa and a screen addicted charlotte under there special type i'm not sure the apple that's quite depressing obviously the potatoes were over there where the uh the thing is that i built to keep the kids happy looks like something's stripping oh no i remember what that is doesn't matter so this is the plum uh, i'm not doing anything with it this year what i probably will do when it comes to pruning it next spring is i will take all that off i will take all that off i may take this off leave this little shoot here and i'll probably trim this one back to here and that'll hopefully cause it to to bush out and not grow too tall i need to restake i need to get a new stake for the pear and i need to do it uh, reasonably urgently uh not uh, you know i'm tempted to say you know what let it do what it wants to do but yeah we'll see we'll see some of the pear, some of the pears on there have got a little bit of damage but there's too much on there for such a little treat anyway keep saying this this is coming out so don't worry about that but the garlic some of the garlic and some some extra strawberries in there we've got the uh some of the elephant garlic in there it's all starting to yellow off now so uh another month or so on that i need to do something with regards to let me show you up on this new growth up here look uh so i need to get some uh I'll probably just get a commercial aphid spray to be honest uh, every time I use neem oil I just get berated with comments saying no oh, it's, it's, it's not for pest control yada 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 and it's dangerous and yada 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 so so washing up liquid and vinegar they're not rated for pest control so you know use what you know the shallots not showing any signs of yellowing off there is some scapes in there I've just noticed so I need to get in there, but like I say, I am out of time today. Uh, I'll be coming on my own probably later in the week, which gives me a bit more time because I can pack up a, a sandwich and things like that. The rest of the elephant garlic and the red onions. We've got the <laughs> broad beans are going absolutely ballistic. Uh, no signs of any beans on there yet. Uh, I need to remember to uncover them before I leave today. But there we go. Strawberry plants are quite happy in there. The peas, I need to weed them out. But once again, like I said, I'm out of time. Hello. What else we got? We got chickens. We got red currants. I've got red currants on. Uh, if you want to see any of this in more detail, guys, if you head over to the Instagram page, the Instagram page, don't pull any off, Rosa. The Instagram page has all these things in close up on it. So any fruit, you know, any pretty pictures you want to see, you'll find them over there on Instagram. 
This is the second apple tree, the gooseberry bush. Once again, it's it's grown from a stick uh, two years ago, so not expecting great things this year. I do need to before I go actually just put some spikes on all these nozzles in here so that the water's going to the right place. But the chili plants are quite happy, as are the pepper plants. They all seem to survive and there's some bindweed coming up in here so this needs all to come out as well. Uh, as I've discussed many times, all that back there is all getting cleared this year. <sighs> now that I'm done with the majority of the big projects, so I need to do some weeding in here. And sort of go around. We've got loads of different varieties in here. We've got sweet peppers, we've got cayennes, we've got ahi lemons. We've got more cayennes, we've got pepperoncinis, we've got super hot, so we've got maruga scorpion. These are probably not right, but maruga scorpion. Uh, Carolina Reaper and Chocolate Naga, Dorset Naga, sorry. Might be chocolate, I can't remember now. So the lettuces we've been eating, looks like the last one has blown. Spring onions, we've also been eating. Strawberries. Are you eating strawberries, are you? Yeah. The strawberries in the polytunnel are up. Now, t now, I find that the strawberries that are in the polytunnel are a bit flavourless, but these are my mother plants really, so they're the ones that I try and capture all the runners off. Oh, I've just seen a big clump of mare's tail I need to pull out. I shall do that before we go. More just overflow chilies. These I think are all super hot, so apart from that one looks more like a cayenne. That's because it is a cayenne. The kiwi. Very happy now, very happy now. Uh, so I don't think I'll get any fruit off it ever, but it looks nice. The tomatoes of assorted varieties. There's some younger plants in down there. The carrots from the seed tip and the carrots that were just broadcast sown. And I've just thrown some iceberg lettuce down the front here. Still tidying up. Like I said, I've had that many projects on that there's a load of tidying up to be done. Throw it anywhere, throw it to the chickens, throw it in the compost. It's fine, it's on the uh, a strawberry butt. So, yeah. This is all doing really well. This is the little sort of seed bench that I made, knocked up the other day, and I, I didn't do any recording. And this is all sort of second sowings and things like that. What I am thinking of doing is I'm going to edge all this bench, and I'm going to uh, and I'm going to fill it with pla I'm going to line it with plastic, and I'm going to make a self-watering seed bench. So I'm going to bring up a, a water line from down there put a tap on it so I can turn it on and off. Don't you eat them all, they're for everybody. Oh, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the grape cuttings are looking very sorry for themselves, but they always do. So we've got more squash. We've got the Uchikikuri winter squash here. We've got the sunburst patty pans there. Cucumbers, no sign from any of the Atlantic giants yet. Beans, red flare, red cabbage, well happy with that. Uh, in fact, to be honest, that wants to be out of here now, otherwise it'll get too warm. Chamomile, man, that's gone ballistic. Some more green beans, some nasturtiums, which I need to do something with. Some little gem lettuce, which looks like it needs thinning a little bit. And some more peppers, uh, some basil. Uh, which I'm now neglecting. These guys all really need a drink. So I'm just gonna spend five minutes just sorting out in here. Uh, oh, underneath, we've got some more peppers and a couple of fasalis. And those are worlds apart. And those those were potted up about three weeks later than these guys that went in the ground. Um, so, you know, go figure. That's that's the strength of compost, I guess. I guess. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there, guys. This was going to be just a quick whip round. Uh, I need to get in and pull all the suckers off the tomatoes, things like that. I'm going to do a lot more in-depth on... Um, Sunday's video this is obviously this is going to be Wednesday's so I'll come back down on my own where I can actually spend some time uh, weeding and filming and things like that so until then guys I'll see you later hey up YouTube right we're back at home in the uh, the at home garden so oh let me get down here a minute so I'm just going to quickly run you through the uh, the stuff we've got growing at home and the progress update on a couple of the things like the the sunflower challenge there's there's some of the ones 
that's going for I think is it the tallest in container so that's that's some of mine uh, we'll run you I'll run you through mrs. sheds and the two little sheds I decide whether to take this branch off it's getting a bit long but what we've got down here we've got a KN down there and we've got one of the money maker tomatoes here another one here look and we're starting to see starting to set flower this is one of the ones that doesn't look like a tomato but has germinated from the money maker we've got a little bit of basil oh, my nemesis we've got the hot lemon here so starting to set flowers look if i can get it to focus there you go starting to set flowers we've got the little cayenne that's that's staying little but is setting fruit annoyingly so i'll just let it do what it wants to do this is my one seed challenge uh beef steak tomato that i did so we're not small obviously that's that's the label that went in the seed pot and we're up here and yeah it's once again starting to set flowers down in this little corner here we've got one of the pepperoncini peppers which seems to be growing really slowly now what have i got left here seedling wise so we've got some celery which i think is probably going to end up past it i don't think it's going to i don't think it's going to be plantable and the brussels sprouts i can actually move these now it's a bit of space up here look then we've got me chives which are looking a bit sorry for themselves actually some second sowing of celery a second sowing of kohlrabi and some cucumbers that nothing came of them and then we've got mrs sheds uh three sunflowers for the tallest sunflower they uh they need taken out i gave them some water and some food last night and then coming around here got the atlantic giant looks like some of them are about to break the surface the uh, pineapple those you've just seen we've got the honeydew melons nothing from the kale yet which is weird I would have expected that to be up by now but that's that's from a safe seed is this melon so I'm quite chuffed to have what have we got three four five six six of nine at the moment so quite happy with that the showmaster onions they seem to sort of stand up and flop over whenever they damn well feel like it uh, the crystal white sweet pepper and then my overwintered jalapeno on the end here let's have a look how we're doing we've got fruit we've got fruit we've got flowers there's all sorts all over that so that is now getting fed as well with uh, liquid seaweed so yeah that's that's the greenhouse we'll do a quick quick sort of walk around outside there's, there's not a great deal going on out here that's changed obviously the peas the potatoes the lettuce which i really should thin out it might grow a bit better we've got the cabbages and the brassicas in there the shallots the turnips i mean wow look at the tops on these guys they seem to be just getting massive i don't know if that's what they're supposed to do but they're getting massive and then we've got the container stuff so the mint more potatoes green beans container carrots they need thinning we're having a salad tonight so i'm probably going to thin them out and put the top put the whole thing it's all, all you do really Let's have a look in here see if we can grab one from somewhere see if it'll come didn't come all you do is just throw that in a salad just give them a rinse and throw the whole thing in the salad radishes i might pull these because um, I will say this uh, peat-free compost, those radishes should have been done by now, and they're really not, they're really behind. So, I think it's a water retention thing. The potatoes, which is a shame because I really wanted the peat-free compost to be good, but I'll have a look. This is the display carrots, in a display carrots, no, display sunflowers in container. Charlotte's display sunflowers in container roses they're just some bulbs that are left to die back for winter 
and then we've got the container strawberries as you can see quite happily setting up strawberries this little three tier thing that me and Charlotte did so we've got I don't know what order it is now we've got French marigolds on the top African marigolds underneath that and cornflower underneath that I'm not sure what's going to happen with all that guys but we'll wait and see We've got the bulbs that came from Jay Parker's that came as a freebie with my seed potatoes and still no sign of them. I'll just quickly one of the other container strawberries, lots of fruit, lots of flowers. This one has set a load of flowers look and a load of fruit. The kids fairy gardens. You know why not eh um and the blueberries that have kind of just been left and abused have also you can just about see in there have also set a bit of fruit so that's going to be it for me today guys so it's just a quick update i'll be doing more on sunday so please like share and subscribe remember what i've said about that just giving link i'll try and make sure it is in the description below uh, and let's start uh, start the ball rolling on a bit of charity and it's going to run like I say roughly until about October time so we'll uh, we'll go from there so until Sunday guys I'll see you later